Today's lesson, 10.3, Day 2, Theoretical versus Experimental Probability. Again, this is in your B book, Volume B book, Chapter 10. As part of your homework tonight, you also had to finish page 21. So make sure that you've answered page 21, the question about the number line. So today's lesson starts back on page 20. So if you go flip back a page to page 20, it says, In a population study, 125,000 people are classified according to their age. The table shows the observed frequency for each age interval. The observed frequency in the thousands, so this is really 16,000, 48,000, 26,000 and 35,000. If you add that all up, it gives you the 125,000. So um, letter A says, complete the table, write each relative frequency as a percent. So 16,000 out of the 125, and I could simplify that fraction as 16, because they both have thousands, yes, three zeros and three zeros after it. So 16 out of 125, I have to change it to a percent, while the decimal would be 128 thousandths, move it over to, would give me 12 and 8 tenths percent. 48,000 out of the 125, I'm showing you my fractions so you know how I'm getting my decimals, would be 384 thousandths, change it, move it over to, would give me 38 and 4 tenths percent. 26 out of 125 would give me 20 and 8 tenths percent. And the 35 out of 125, um, when I divide that, I get 28 hundredths. Moving it over to, I get 28%. So I've shown my relative frequency. How are they related out of the total 16,000 out of 125,000? Find the relative frequency for the people between 40 and 60 years of age. 40 and 60 years of age. So I have to add two of my um, areas together, which is the 20 and 8 tenths plus the 28 percent, give your answer as a percent, so between 40 and 60. That's these two percents that I'm adding together. So that would give me a total of 48 and 8 tenths percent. If a person is randomly selected, what is the probability that the selected person is greater than or equal to 20 years old, but less than 30 years old. Greater than or equal to 20, but less than 30. That's this group right here, which is uh, 12 and a 8 tenths percent. So what is the probability? Well, probability could be answered a couple ways. I could say 16,000 out of 125,000, I could, you know, go ahead and put those zeros on there, because it says, what is the probability? Probability could also be answered as the decimal, 128,000, or it could be answered as the percent. So any one of these answers, since it's asking probability, would be correct. The fraction, the decimal, or the percent. Draw a relative frequency histogram using percent. And I know the graph paper is very light on here. Again, try your best to um, draw a relative frequency histogram, meaning the bars are going to touch. And we are taking our percents from our table, 12 and 8 tenths, 38 and 4 tenths, 20 and 8 tenths, and 28 percent, and making them into a histogram. So I've gone ahead and labeled my x-axis. I went over every three boxes of the graph paper to represent 10 years of age on the horizontal axis. 
10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. You got to go up to at least 60. And then the number of people in the thousands um, as a percent. So this is as a percent or the percent of people um, in the thousands. This is listed as a percent, their relative frequency. So using a straight edge, and I counted up four boxes. I'm not sure you can count up four boxes so that these bars are nice and tall and nice and wide. So trying with a straight edge or a ruler type tool from 20 to 30, that would be about 12 and a half, so a little bit about that, 12 and 8 tenths percent. And then the 30 to 40 year olds is 38 and 4 tenths. And then 20 and 8 tenths. And then 28%. So now I'm going to label the top of each of the bars with the percent. 38 and 4 tenths percent. 20 and 8 tenths percent. And the last one, 28%. So there's my relative frequency histogram. Page 22, 23, I guess. We're going to go over to page 23. Page 23 with the dartboard. Lucas made a dartboard as shown in the diagram. He threw a dart at the dartboard a hundred times. He recorded the number of times the dart landed on each color. Then the number of times he missed hitting the dartboard was also recorded. So he's got seven misses. Find the relative frequency for each of the events. Write each relative frequency as a decimal. So landing on red was 10 out of 100 times. So 10 out of 100 as a decimal, that's the same thing as one tenth. So that's the decimal, one tenth. Landing on a yellow was 35 out of 100 which is the same thing as 35 hundredths. Well, this is easy. Um, blue was 48 out of 100. So that's 48 hundredths. And missing, um, misses was 7 out of 100 or 7 hundredths as a decimal. Well, those were easy to answer. Wasn't that nice that it was out of 100? Explain what the relative frequency of the dart landing in the red region means. The event of landing in the red region has a relative frequency of one-tenth, which means that the dart landed in the red region about 10% of the time. Okay? If Lucas throws the dart again, predict in which region the dart is most likely to land. Well, it's already landed most likely in the blue, so the dart is most likely to land in the blue region because oh, blue has the greatest relative frequency of 48% or 48 out of 100. Well, that was pretty easy. So on page 24, you see this large piece of graph paper. I'm going to draw a relative frequency bar graph, not a histogram, relative frequency bar graph on here. And it's a very large piece of graph paper. So we have to use the majority of the piece of graph paper. So I'm going to put my axes here and maybe go in a couple up here. Oh, hard to drop that straight line right there. Okay, so my axes here. So we have a relative frequency will be my y-axis. Hitting the little 
moving bar again. Let's see. Relative frequency. And color is my x axis. And it's a bar graph. Um, red was tenth of a percent. I think I can count up one, two, maybe three boxes. To see this. One, two, three. That's one tenth. One, two, three. That's two tenths. One, two, three. That's three tenths. One, two, three. That's four tenths. One, two, three. I want them to be nice and tall, so I'm counting up three boxes. That's five tenths right here. And I need to go any higher than that. Oh. The last one up here is six tenths. Okay, so red was one tenth, right? Red was one tenth, so red, let's make them maybe two wide. And oh, you should be using a straight edge, yes, you should be using a straight edge. So that's red, was one tenth. And yellow was uh, 35 hundredths. So yellow So that was yellow, blue is 48 hundredths, I'm using a straight edge again, nice and tall, using the majority of the paper. So that's blue. And then the last one was Mrs., which was only seven hundredths, not even all the way up to one tenth there. So seven hundredths, not quite up to one. So this was the misses. So I've used the majority of my y-axis and the majority of my x-axis. Nice tall bars, nice wide bars. My spacing is not bigger than my bars. I use two wide and one space, two wide, one space, two wide, one space. That's a relative frequency bar graph. And that's it for today.